Kindly open your Bibles with me in Philippians chapter 2. We'll be reading verses 1 through 11. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. We are in the second part of this uh, series po, Live Worthy of the Gospel of Christ. Nandun uh, po tayo sa first part. Last Sunday, we have studied the uh, First Corinthians, uh, I'm sorry, Philippians chapter 1, 27 through 13. Now in, we are in the part of the second chapter. We'll be reading verses 1 through 11. Let me hear your amen po, mga kapatid, if you are already there. Allow me to read this with you in English, or I'm sorry, in Holman Christian Standard Bible. It says here, If then there is any encouragement in Christ... If any consolation of love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by thinking the same way, having the same love, sharing the same feelings, focusing on one goal. Do nothing out of rivalry or conceit, but in humility, consider others as more important than yourselves. Everyone should look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Make your own attitude that of Christ Jesus, who existing in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be used for his own advantage. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a slave, taking on the likeness of men. And when he had come as a man in his external form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to the death, even to death on a cross. For this reason, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father join me in prayer church May you see our heart, O oh Lord, truly that is desiring to give glory to you alone. So if there's any motivation, any other motivation, any other motives for us in coming here, we seek for your forgiveness, O oh Lord. As you have allowed us, Lord, to gather in this place, we pray and we ask that this gathering would truly one that display the beauty, the excellency, and the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. And by saying so, Lord God, we are guaranteed, Lord, that what we worship, that what kind of the, the kind of worship that we worship you is the kind of worship that is pleasing to your sight, O oh Lord. So make our hearts truly wanting to worship you and pleasing you, our Lord. As you have allowed us once again to read your words, we ask for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you be the one to illumine these words, your words before us, O oh Lord. Make us see the truths of these words. Give us, Lord, the understanding that truly, Lord, as we understand this, the more that we see the beauty, the excellency in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Make our hearts truly wanting to learn from your words. Thank you, Lord. Teach us, O oh Lord, speak to us in the most personal way for you alone can do that, O oh Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart 
be acceptable to you, my God, my rock and my redeemer. Lord Jesus Christ, use the list of your servant to say whatever that your people, all of us, would like to hear this morning. Let the gospel of Christ be preached this time. Thank you, Lord. And as we hear your gospel, again, draw our eyes. Make our eyes see the beauty, the excellency, and the glory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In your name we pray, all of us would say, Amen. Just a little review po of last Sunday. Last Sunday, we have learned, we are, we, have, we are to live worthy of the gospel of Christ. And last Sunday, now I've already shared this with you. The first part would be the why and the why. Live worthy of the gospel of Christ. And this Sunday, we'll go to that part of the topic on the how to live worthy of of the gospel of Christ. Last Sunday, we have, we have learned you, the what and the why. The five. Living in a way that is worthy of Christ's gospel. Living unitedly, cooperatively, and fearlessly for Christ's gospel. Living in the privilege to suffer for Christ's gospel. Last Sunday, we have realized, mga kapatid, we have learned, the cause of the servant's or slave's joy is the joy of his master. Brothers and sisters, I hope we find our joy in the joy of our master. His joy is the cause of our joy. His joy is the reason of our joy. His joy is what makes us joyful in this life. Knowing the joy of the Master, that is already joy in us. At habang po, the, as we continue on, seeing that joy, in our master, joy of our master, it leads us to be doing things that be joyful to Him. Pleasing to Him. Kaya po last Sunday, Christ is worth living for and He is worth dying for. Christ is all we need and He is far more incomparably worth it. Alam niyo po mga kapatid, I hope ngayon pa lang po as we continue studying this letter of Apostle Paul to the Philippian Church, unti-unti po at ating nare-refresh yung saliri natin mga kapatid, there is nothing in this world that would make us joyful. Nothing in this world that can compare to our Lord Jesus Christ. Even Christ himself mentioned in Mark, in the Synoptic Gospels. What does a man gain if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? I hope by now, mga kapatid, we are through the word of the Lord. His word continue on telling us nothing can make us happy in this world. Only Christ. And if we are in Christ, everything, whatever that happens around us, it's nothing already. Why? Because we already have Christ with us. Kaya po yung naalala niyo po, na-share ko po, noong no first part, Mawala na ang lahat sa atin, wag lang ikaw. Di ba? Yun po yung pag-ibig eh. At sana po yun po yung ating nararamdaman kay Kristo. Mawala na pong lahat, wag lang ikaw, Kristo. 
believers and followers of Christ are to live in a manner that reflects the teachings of the gospel. Here, church, believers and followers of Christ should continue to conduct themselves in a manner that aligns with the principles of Christ's message. Brothers and sisters, I'd like us to realize this. It's the same thing with how we view with sin or how we view sin. We are not sinful because we sin. Nasasundan niyo po yun? Hindi po tayo makasalanan dahil po tayo ay nagkasala. We are sinning because we are sinful. Nasusundan po natin? We are sinful by nature because of what the original sin have done to us. Put, that in a, put, put all of us in a position and condition that we are in that sinful nature. And because we are in sinful nature, what do we do as sinful people? Those who have sinful nature. We sin, definitely. That is why, hindi po, dahil gumagawa tayo ng mali, tayo makasalanan. That's not the point. The point is that tayo nga po ay makasalanan, kaya po tayo gumagawa ng kasalanan. It's the same thing, brothers and sisters, when we are already in Christ. Listen and listen carefully, church. When we are in Christ, His righteousness is already imputed to us, clothed to us. And because we are in Christ, the Holy Spirit works in our lives. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Here goes, brothers and sisters, listen carefully and go with me. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is to make us holy and make us according to the likeness of Christ. That's His goal. That is His ministry as a child of God. Kaya po ang tawag po doon is we are under sanctification. Being made holy. Being made righteous. Though we are already righteous, wag po ninyo tanggalin, in Christ. But in our own individuality, Holy Spirit makes us righteous. Nasusunod po natin. And part of the Holy Spirit ministry is to make us a new person. New person in Christ and continuously making us a new person. We have been, it's been, and will always be on that progress. Nasusundan po natin? Here goes. Because Holy Spirit is us. Listen carefully, church. If because the Holy Spirit in him is in us, Holy Spirit will make us bear fruits of righteousness. Yun po yung sinabi ngayon. Dinidil po ni Apostle Paul sa Ephesians. Here. Because Holy Spirit's ministry is for us to bear fruits of righteousness. Church, listen up. We do things that are righteous because Holy Spirit in us bears fruit of righteousness. Nasasundan niyo po? It's not that we become righteous by the things that we do as righteous. Nasasundan niyo po? Hindi po tayo nagiging righteous because gimagawa po tayo ng mga bagay na righteous and therefore nagiging righteous ako. No. Gusto po makita natin because Christ is in us, His Spirit is in us, He bears fruit of righteousness and therefore we do righteousness acts. And this is the point of Paul. You already have the gospel of Christ. You have been born again. And therefore, if you are born again, Holy Spirit is continually working in your lives and therefore, that righteousness should be displayed out in our lives. And paano po natin nadi-display yun? By our conduct, by our manner. So Paul was also saying here, do not just say that you have been born again. Show it by your actions. Hello? 
Po, mga kapatid? So here, si Apostle Paul po focus his attention to practical conditions. In this part, now to keep us guided, mga kapatid, to look into our scripture text for today, let us remember this. Chapters 2 and chapter 3 are the heart of this letter. This is the heart of his letter, this letter, Philippians. In chapter 2, Paul depicts the earthly life of the Lord Jesus Christ during those days. So here, Apostle Paul draws the attention of his audience, his listeners, do not look to me, look at Christ. I'll tell you the example of Christ. If you are not convinced in my life, then therefore look at Christ. Ganun po ngayon, mga kapatid. While in chapter 3, he illustrates the Lord Jesus in his current heavenly state. So, chapter 2, have earthly life. Chapter 3, heavenly state. So, in chapter 2, the Apostle Paul points out the mindset of Lord Jesus Christ. To the Philippians, to both you and me, in our times. So this chapter, church, provides examples also of individuals with the mind of Christ. Namely, Paul also mentioned himself, Timothy, and Epaphroditus. Baka kasi sabihin, eh, of course, Jesus Christ yan, no? wait, wait. You can also find examples of people who live according or live worthy of the gospel of Christ. And it's the same thing with us. Mga kapatid, yun po yung inaasahan sa bawat mananampalataya. As believers and followers of Christ, being servants, this is how to live worthy of the gospel of Christ. At papano po yon? We will look into the example of the Master. Paul draws the attention of his listeners to his audience. Look at the Master. Imitate the Master. You are His servants. We are His servants, so we am imitate our Master. Also, we will find here the do's and the do nots. Pansin niyo po yon? Dito po sa chapter 2, verses 1 through 11, you can find do's and do nots. So, last Sunday, we have also learned there, are, there appears to be a division also in the church of Philippians. In the Philippian congregation. And this also addresses that issue. So dito po, in-encourage po ni Paul yung elders, yung deacons, maging, they stand united. They cooperate with each other. And they, together as one body, contend for the faith and for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Kung meron man po silang kailangan gawin magkaisa po sila. For the sake of Christ, for the sake of the gospel of Christ, kung meron man po silang kailang move forward, that is Christ and for the sake of the gospel of Christ. So sinasabi ngayon ni Apostle Paul, just look at this, this is one goal for all of us. So we take the scripture text today, keeping in mind of the situation inside the church as well. In the Philippi, as the Apostle Paul addresses this issue. So let us look Philippians chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and A. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, if any consolation of love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any affection and mercy fulfill my joy. Mga kapatid, pansinin niyo po, notice the words if many times mentioned there, four times in this translation. Maybe the question is if, so that means 
they don't have it yet. It's a conditional phrase or term. If, kung, in Tagalog, by the way, Sister Bren, kung, in Tagalog. So pwede po natin, if we are going to put it in Tagalog, we might translate this verse, verse 1, as something like, kaya nga kung mayroon. Nasusundan po natin? Kaya nga kung mayroon. Pero, we can put it in another way. In another tra Tagalog translation, something like, kaya nga sapagkat mayroon. Nasusundan po na rin? Malaki po yung difference nung kaya nga kung mayroon. Because kaya nga kung mayroon, it's, there's, there's a form of doubt there. Questioning na present na nga ba? Nasusundan po natin. But yung second translation ng Tagalog, Kaya nga sapagkat mayroon. So what we need to understand in this phrase is, it is not telling of a doubt. In the side of Apostle Paul, he is not doubting if the Philippian church congregation has these things. However, on the other hand, it is a declaration of certainty. Paul is declaring that he is certain you already have these things. Why? Because you are in Christ already. I believe Paul is say, saying you are in Christ and therefore I know you have this. I am certain of this. Also, Paul is making a provocation here. He's provoking the Philippian congregation to reflect to reflect on whether these qualities are evident in their lives. He's provoking each one of their his listeners there na tingnan mo nga yung sarili mo look at yourself, just see yourself, kung meron na nga bang meron sa'yo to, you have these qualities already in your life. So he's provoking you listeners niya, audience niya, check yourself, check yourself. So first, he is making a declaration of certainty because he is certain that the person who was in Christ has this quality. But second, he's telling to the listeners, check yourself. Check yourself whether you are living with those qualities. Mga kapatid, Paul is also making a consolation here. He's making a comfort to the Philippian congregation. He's telling them, you are in Christ, don't worry. If you are in Christ, you will bear fruit of these qualities. Kaya po, na-mention niya po ito, mga kapatid, you have partnership already in the fell with the spirit. Also, Paul is telling to the Philippian church congregation, I felt this, I saw this. I saw this in you. Kaya po natandaan po natin at the start of the letter Yung introduction na po, you have been with me, partners with me from the start of my ministry. That is why he's telling to the, to, the, to the congregation, I know I've seen that in you. So since Christ, brothers and sisters, since Christ, here goes, since Christ encourages us, since he loves us, and comforts us since God's Spirit fellowships with us and since Christ is very merciful to us, then I know you have these quali qualities. In verses, since, yun po yung, yun po yung gusto kong makita natin dito yung verses 1, 2, and A. In certainty po ni Apostle Paul. So the Apostle Paul is confident He's so confident that encouragement, participation in the Holy Spirit, 
affection, sympathy exist in Christ and are present in the Philippians community. And these are realities in Christ. Ito po yung mga katotohanan kay Kristo. These are realities in Christ. And these are realities of being united to Him. Kaya po, ito po ngayon si Paul, eh, binibigay niya po example ang master natin. Totoo itong lahat na ito kay, sa Lord Jesus Christ, sa master. At totoo ito sa mga sumusunod sa slaves sa Kanya. And now he's telling to us, make, check your manners, check your conducts. Kaya po, mga kapatid, kitang-kita po ito ni Apostle Paul eh. Remember this time, si Apostle Paul po was in prison and the Philippian congregation never stopped. You know, making him feel that we support you that we are with you. Alam niyo po, patuloy po nilang sinasama si Apostle Paul. Patuloy silang nagsusupport kay Apostle Paul. Patuloy silang nag stand beside the gospel of Christ and with Apostle Paul because that's the message of Paul. Alam niyo po yung ramdam na ramdam po ni Paul yung participation ng Philippian congregation. Buhay na buhay po yung gospel sa kanila. At patuloy na po inahamon ang mga, ang mga ang congregation na to never stop, continue on. Continue on. And, and such comfort, such comfort I felt and I continue on feeling no? while he, he was there in prison. Yan yung comfort na binibigay niya sa akin. Pag kayo ay nagpapadala ng, ng support niyo, pag dinibisita niyo ako, I feel your comfort and encouragement. Here goes, sabi ni Apostle Paul, I know your, that comfort, that encouragement, it's not because, it's not from any human source. I know it comes from the Holy Spirit. It is God who makes you live like that. It is that comfort, kaya naman kayo nakakapag-comfort because first, you have been comforted by Christ. Kaya kayo nakakapag-encourage because Holy Spirit continue to encourage you. So it, this, this comfort, this encourage, encouragement is not something that we bear on our own. Understand nyo? It's something that comes from the Lord. Kaya po yung nalaman po sabi ni Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 1, 3-5. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Tingnan niyo po kung saan nagad dinadala ni Apostle Paul yung attention, yung, ob, yung, yung attention ng kanyang readers. He comforts us. Here go, verse 4. He comforts us in all of our afflictions. Who, who is the one who comforts us? Paul is saying it's not us but it's God. So that we may be able to comfort those who are in any kind of affliction. So we are not exempted to any afflictions as we also learn in this book of Philippians. But as we go through those afflictions, God comforts us. And because He comforts us, and the Sabbath of verse 4, that we may be also well, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any kind of affliction. Through the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For us, the sufferings of Christ overflow to us. So, through Christ, our comfort also overflows. Brothers and sisters, Habang po tayo ay nako-comfort through our afflictions, habang po tayo, mga kapatid, ay na-encourage by the fellowship of the Holy Spirit sa atin, remember all these things He has granted us to us so that we can also comfort others. We can also encourage each other. So, my, the point here is not 
This is not something that because we persevere of it, because we are strong. No. It's because of the comfort that God gives us. Also, in Philippians 2.2, 2, Fulfill my joy. How? By thinking the same way, having the same love, sharing the same feelings, focusing on one goal. Alam niyo po yung mga kapatid yung sinabi nito, fulfill my joy. Or in other translation, make my joy full. I'd like us to think, it's Paul is somehow illustrating a container and that container can be filled. So when we said, fulfill my joy, fill it, fill it up. And how do we do that? Paul is saying, by thinking the same way, having the same love, sharing the same feelings, focusing on one goal. Paul is somehow telling, cause me to rejoice greatly. So How? First, fix our minds, hearts, and interests only in Christ. Fix our minds, hearts, and interests only in Christ. There is no other object. There is no other goal. There is no other target. Christ is the object. So let us focus ourselves our minds, our hearts, all our interests as believers and followers of Christ in Christ. All of us are in Christ. Amen? And then we focus our minds and our hearts and our interests in Christ. So, you know, we are looking here of one mind, one, vo one, one object to see. We are looking at one picture here, one person here, one being here, one example here. By thinking the same way, it means agree with one another. Because Christ, because of Christ, and for Christ. Of course, there would there 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 will be times that we will disagree to each other. But the admonition of the apostle here is that as you disagree, also you have got to strive to agree. And you have got to see and check yourselves, hey, this is not for your own individual agendas. Remember, because of Christ, and you are living for Christ. And therefore, if we, both of us would look and think this way, then I, th I believe we will come to an agreement. Do I hear amen, brothers and sisters? You sinabi po niyang, Having the same love? Ibig sabihin po niya, mga kapatid, share the same love. The love of Christ. Hindi ba naramdaman natin yung pag-ibig ni Kristo? We have felt the love of Christ in us. And therefore, that love of Christ is in us. Then therefore, share that love to others. That is the same love that we refer here. And as we continue on doing that, brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, we are going to progress in loving one another. Mga kapatid, in the New Testament, the most reiterated command aside from loving God, is love one another. There is no other strong distinctive of a person who, are in, who is in Christ, of people who are in Christ, the, stronger, the strongest mark of being in Christ is that we may be able or we are loving one 
another. That's the strongest. Kaya po paulit-ulit ine-emphasize. In sharing the same feeling, it means united in spirit. We are united in spirit, being together in tune with Christ and with each other. Alam niyo po yung, alam natin po yung will ng Lord, alam natin yung gusto ng Lord, nasasadad po natin yon. And because we know that, we know kung ano po ang will ng Lord sa buo, sa atin, sa assembly. Yun po yung sinasabing sharing the same feeling. Hindi po yung, hindi po mga kapatid na dumadating po tayo. We don't come to a point wherein we, we prefer this person than this person. We prefer this group than this group. That's not being in tune with Christ. That's not being in tune with the love of Christ. Numination po ni Paul, focusing on one goal means one mind. We are thinking the same thing. We are thinking the same agenda. We are thinking the same plan, same thing to do. We are thinking of whom to please. We are thinking of whom to give the glory to. Alam niyo po yun, mga kapatid, we are thinking of Christ when we are thinking for Christ and His gospel. And ultimately, we do things for His glory. All of us, brothers and sisters, when we, be, when we are born again, we are all gifted by the gift of the Holy Spirit. And each one of us, brothers and sisters, has a valuable role inside the body of Christ. That's why you have a part and a role there. Not to be able to function according to that role, you are already disobeying Christ. Why? Because you belong in that body. Simple lang po analogy, mga kapatid. Christ is the head, we are the body. So pag sinabi ng head dito, then we go dito. When we say the, the head would say here, then we go here. When we said that, when the head said we stop, then we stop. When the head says we go, then we go. When, they said we, when the head said we do this, then we do this. That's the role, that's the relationship of the head and the body. Sometimes, mga kapatid, we become the head. He becomes the body. Let me go back to my point, earlier point. Each of us have gifts. Brother, sister, you have been neglecting to serve the Lord by not functioning according to your gifts. You have not really come to a point wherein you are truly worshiping God. Wherein you are truly serving God the church we all have parts we have all roles we are part of the body i don't mind if you are just a finger i don't mind if you are just a part of an, one of the ears i don't mind christ does not mind but for as long as you know your part and you are doing your part that's the point If you have the gift of encouragement, brother, sister, the church needs you. Church needs encouragement. Church needs, brother, sister, if you have the gift of encouragement, go to your leaders. Encourage them. Encourage them. Pray for them. If you have the gift of mercy, then show mercy to me now by Forgiving me if I fail this sermon. No, I'm, I'm, brother, sister, if you say that your gift is serving, then what's stopping you from serving? Kailangan pa bang lapitan tayo ni pastor o isang elder? And ask you, no, kailangan ko. No, if you have that gift of service, then 
tell me what to do, then I'll do it for Christ. Nasusundan po natin, mga kapatid. If you have the gift of teaching, then what's stopping you from teaching? What's stopping you from teaching? You say that you have gift of teaching, then what's stopping you? You have the gift of giving, then by all means give. And we praise the Lord for your life. And it doesn't necessarily mean that the, the whole congregation will know that you are giving. Because we don't like you to lose your reward in heaven. Brother, sister, if you have the gift of evangelism, by all means stand up and evangelize. What's stopping you? This is what Paul is saying. You have already, you are already in Christ. Holy Spirit is working in you. Then what's stopping you? Who's stopping you, by the way? If that person is stopping you, that that person is being used by the enemy. If anything stops you from doing exercising the gift of the Holy Spirit in your life, then that is not from the Lord. I'm not mad. I'm just being dynamic. Because I can see people <clears throat> one time I asked, why, why do you do, why, why, why do you sometimes you be dynamic? Yeah, because sometimes I feel I am in the Spratly's Island. Brother, sister, here, we do not serve for the sake of serving. We serve, here, careful, listen. We serve because of Christ and for Christ. Kaya po, Sabi ni Paul again in 1 Corinthians 1.10, Now I urge you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree in what you say, that there be no divisions among you, and that you be united with the same understanding and the same conviction. We understand, all of us understand we are all in Christ. Amen? All of us wouldn't understand that because we are all in Christ and therefore we are to function for Christ. Amen? But parang humina na dun. In Philippians 2, 3 to 4. Do nothing out of rivalry or conceit, but in humility. Consider others as more important than yourselves. Everyone should look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Leads us to point number two. Do away with pride, being selfish, and self-centered. Do away with pride, being selfish and self-centered. Daanan lang po natin quickly. Ano po ba yung bagiging selfish? Being selfish is refers to a person's tendency to prioritize their own needs, desires, or interests, or over those of others. That's selfish. It involves a lack of consideration for the well-being or feelings of others. Based, these are basic Definition of selfish. Selfishness is more about actions that prioritizes or prioritize oneself. If we see ourselves in this definition or description, then we have selfishness. What is being self-centered? Self-centered implies 
a focus primarily on oneself in various aspects of lives. So, kahit na anong pag-usapan, ang lagi pong bida, ako, 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 ako. This can include not only prioritizing one's needs, but also being preoccupied with one's own thoughts. Please take note, self, 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 self. Own, 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 own. Me, 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 me. I, 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 I. Concerns, concerns mo lang, perspectives mo lang, ini-exclude mo yung perspectives ng iba. So self-centered is about a broader orientation or mindset that revolves around self. Hindi ho ba magkapatid ang selfish at self-centeredness? They are brothers. And then, hey, hey, here. Let us check ourselves. Basic definition of pride. Look, often involved in being as selfish and self-centered. So now we understand, oh, that's the definition, basic definition of selfish and basic definition of selfishness. And therefore, pride is there. Pride refers to an excessive sense of one's own importance, achievements, abilities. When being selfish or self-centered, they prioritize their own needs and desires without considering the impact on others driven by a sense of superiority and self-importance. Yes, brothers and sisters, pride is so much active. Kaya po sabi ni Paul in Ephesians 4, 1 to, 4, 1 to 3, Therefore, I, the prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk worthy of the calling you have received with all humility and gentleness. With patience, accepting one another in what? In love. Diligently keeping the unity of the Spirit with the peace that binds us. Holy Spirit caused us to be united with one another. So do all we can to remain united. With the same love. With the same spirit. Let me ask you, church, what really destroys a relationship? Ano nga ho ba talaga ang sumisira ng relasyon? We know it's sin. Theologically speaking, it's sin. But to be particular, for us to be precise, ano nga po ba ang sumisira talaga ng relationship? Ano sumisira ng marriage? Ano sumisira ng friendship? Ano sumisira ng parent and child relationship? Alam niyo po ko ano? Selfishness. Self-centeredness. And pride. That destroys relationship. This destroy relationship. Kaya po ano sabi ni James regard, with regard to this? James 4, 1 and 2. Tingnan niyo po ang sabi ni James. What is the source of wars and fights among you? Don't they come from the cravings that are at war within you? You desire and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war. You do not have because you do not ask. Brothers and sisters here, quarrels and fights arise from strong emotions or selfish desires. Kaya po may away, kasi meron, ang taas ng pride. Kaya po sa loob ng church, bury me. Inside the church, there is no such thing as position. Because the only position that we have inside the church is to be servants and slaves of Christ. 
We have only one master here. Kaya po walang position. If just so happen that you are ministry head, it does not make you a boss in that ministry. Under kita, nasa ministry kita, hello, okay ka lang. Eh di under ka ng elders. Di ba dapat nagre-report ka sa elders? Eh ba't di ka rin nagre-report? Kung ganun ang iyong pamantayan, nasusundan niyo po ako mga kapatid? However, I'm not, that's, I will not go through that eh, because I'm, what I'm saying here is this. We, all, we have only one master here. And we are all servants here. And the mere fact that you have been entrusted with one ministry, it only means that you serve Christ because of Christ and for Christ. Do I, do I hear amen, mga kapatid? Cravings, alam niyo po, come from the Greek hedonism. Comes from hedone, which means passions. And this leads to conflicts and battles within the church community as well. Hindi po exempted on church. When self-centeredness and selfishness and pride is present and high, what do we expect? Philippians 2, 5 to 11. Make your own attitude that of Christ Jesus. Instead of selfishness, instead of self-centeredness, instead of pride, alisin natin yan. Tingnan natin si Christ. Make our own attitude that of Christ, who existing in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be used for his own advantage. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a slave, taking on the likeness of man, and when he had come as a man, he, in his external form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death of, on a cross. For this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, that, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of the Father. Paul saying, third point, make our own attitude that of Christ Jesus. Make our own attitude as of that of Christ Jesus. Let's adapt the mindset of our Lord. Let's adapt the mindset of our Master and let that be our own principle. Let's adapt the same attitude as with Christ's attitude. Let's, let's, let's look at His model. Let's think the way that He thinks. Think the way He would think. Act the way that He would act. That's making our own attitude that of Christ Jesus. Let us Use Christ's example of humility. Let us copy Christ's example of obedience. That He, even to the most brutal, horrifying, humiliating way of death and shameful way of death, He who humbled Himself and obeyed His Father. Brothers and sisters, our Lord Jesus Christ, he prioritized the interests of his father. All that Christ accomplished are for the glory of his father. And by the way, church, he also done things to the interests of others. Whose others? The salvation of God's own people. Jesus Christ did not become less gusto ko pong linawagin to Jesus Christ did not become less than God or relinquish his divine attributes that's not the way we should interpret this Christ though entitled to all privileges as the king of the universe willingly gave up 
gave them up to be humble Jewish baby destined for the cross. Christ emptied himself by taking on the form of a servant and being born as a man. You see, church, despite having the right to remain in his position of power, his love led him to a position of vulnerability for the sake of sinful humanity. The emptying refers to his human incarnation, not a relinqu relinquishment of his true de deity. When Christ became man, he is also 100% God at the same time. So here, church, all of Christ's accomplishments were ultimately for the interest of others. For the glory of his Father and for the salvation of his people. That's why, in the same passage, he was given the, the highest name, name above all name. Given the highest honor, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth. Given the highest authority, Jesus is Lord. Church, I hope by now we are seeing Christ's example of humility and obedience it is done with love for others. Even when insulted, even when, humili even when hum humiliated, perish, and up to being exalted, Jesus continues to exemplify loving service to God. The Master showed it. The Master showed it how. What about his servants? Ephesians 5, 1, 2 says, Therefore, be imitators of God as dearly loved children. And walk in love as the Messiah also loved us and gave himself us for us, a sacrificial and fragrant offering to God. The question I'd like to leave all, to all of us, what about his servants? Remember, Christ and his words means life to us. Life is not life without Christ and his word. We are nothing and have nothing without him.